Hey guys and girls, and welcome back to episode four in this series where we are building a GraphQL API with Elixir. So what I want to do in this episode is implement the password hashing feature. So if we go over quickly what we did in the last episode, we modified the change set function to put in some extra validation for the user input. And at the end of the change set function, we put our change set into this hash password function that we created down here. But for now, it's taking in the change set and returning the change set. So we want to change that. We want to hash the password so we can safely store it in our database. So let's first start a new branch with git flow. Git flow feature start. And we're going to call it impl implement password hashing. Hashing. That's fine for now. And to do the password hashing, we're going to need two uh, libraries. And the library is called come on in, which is going to provide us with a few amazing functions so that we can easily hash our password. And come on in gives you the freedom to choose between three um, algorithms to hash the password. And we are going to use argon2, but you can choose one of the three down here. So what we want to do is I'm just going to copy this. Those are the two packages we're going to use and in our mix file put a comma and then we're going to paste this in so when you add packages to your mix file we're going to go into our terminal and run mix depths.get which is going to download the packages there we go okay so let's go back into our user model and let's implement the password hashing so what we want to do is if we get into chain sets we want to change something on the chain set so we're going to use the change function that we import from act the chain set. We define that on top of here. So the change function takes in two arguments, the change sets. And what do we want to change? The password field. And we can reference common in dot archon dot add hash and the password that we're going to take out of the chain set. And we can do that actually up here in the arguments. So hang on, I'm going to type something in and then I'm going to explain it what this is going to do. Okay, we're going to need the ecto.change sets. And we want to know if it is valid. True. And then we have in the actual change set the key changes, which is a map. And in that map, we're going to have the password field. And we are going to reference the value of that field and bind it to password. Let's save that. Okay, so what this is doing is we're taking in the chain set and we're pattern matching it. So what we're saying is, okay, the chain set, does it look like this block up here? So does the chain set match the pattern that we defined here? So we need to check if the chain set is valid, if it has a key called changes, and in there, there's a map with the password key value pair. Okay, so now that we have that, we have passwords, we have chain sets, everything is correct here. But at the moment, this function is only going to run if we have an actual chain set with valid true. So we need to define, define another function. Um, otherwise, we're going to get an error if we don't have a valid chain set and it gets to this function. So we're going to say um, hash password. Uh, but in this case, we just accept the chain set. And we don't care if it's valid or not. Okay, so now let's check if everything is working. So let's go back into our terminal and compile our project. And let's reference this module by aliasing it. So that's going to be medium. Oh, medium GraphQL API dot accounts dot user. So now we can reference the chain set function. So if we scroll above, we're going to say user.changeSet. And remember, it takes in as the first argument the user struct. 
And then the second argument is a map with the values that we want to put in there. So in our case, it's a first name. Let's say Harry for now. We need a last name. Of course, Potter. We need an email field and we're going to capitalize it to see if the function down case is working. Harry at com. Then we need a password field. And we need a password underscore confirmation field. Okay, let's see what happens if we run this. And we get an actor chain setback. That's great. We can see the changes that it put in there. So we have an email, a last name, and we don't have a first name because we spelled it correctly. But as you can see, it gives us an error. It says first name can't be blank. So let's quickly change that. We've got an I. And this time we should get back a data set that's valid. There we go. And we can see that it actually hashed the passwords. So everything is working. Now let's see if, for example, the two passwords don't match. What do we get back? The chain set with errors and the chain set is not valid. And it says does not match confirmation. So great. It looks like everything is working. So now let's try and save it in the database. Um, so if we go to the account controller, we can see that Phoenix actually already created this function for us to create user function. And it's doing pretty much exactly what we just did in the terminal. It references to the chain set function. And as a first argument, it takes in the user structs. And the second argument is a map with the values that we want in there. And at the end, it's piping in the actor.chainset in this repo.insert function. So let's reference this repo function for now. And we do that by medium GraphQL API dot repo. And now if we find the valid chain set to a variable quickly to X, it's a valid chain set and we do repo dot insert X. We can see that it inserted into the database and we get back a tuple with OK and all the data that we put in the database. So if we open up Postico for now and we connect to the database, we should have, there we go, we have our first user in the database with a password hash. It has the user role, insert at, update that. Everything is in there. Awesome. Just going to get out of this. Get out of the terminal. Um, and for now, just let's just add this to our branch, git add, git commit, add password hash function. And let's git flow feature finish it. So it's now in the development branch and I'm just going to push it to GitHub. So git push origin develop. There we go. So at the moment we can save users in a database, but we have to do it in our terminal. So what we're going to do in the next episode is set up our GraphQL endpoint um, so that clients can interact with our API through the web. Um, so that's it for now. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. Um, and I hope to see you in the next episode.